Welcome back to some new r slash malicious compliance stories, where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. I hope you had a great day. The first story is called, didn't ask for reference. This happened a few years ago. I received a phone call from an HR person, from a staffing agency I almost worked for at one point. I got through the greetings and small talk and got down to business. I have a person you know applying for a job with one of our customers. I was sort of confused. No one gave me a heads up. Who are we talking about? Your friend Mo. Who? Mo. He said he worked with you at the email company. Oh, okay, I remember him. But I'm not sure why he'd put my name down. We didn't work all that closely. I interacted with his team only peripherally because we had equipment in his office. I don't really feel comfortable providing a reference. Well, that's sort of our fault. We sort of pressured him to cough up references on the fly. I don't feel comfortable providing a reference. Come on, we know each other. Help me out. Well, not being his manager. I can't discuss his performance. Okay, can I ask you about his technical skills and you comment those? Fine. Ask Array. How is Mo with Software Package 1? I guess maybe 2.5 out of 5. 5 out of 5 is extremely rare for the software. I might be 4.7 and I've used the software for over 20 years. I have even flown to the Randos HQ to work on technology issues and help design future versions of products with them. Great. How is he with hardware platform number 1? Well, when he was at the email company, he never touched the platform. If he gained knowledge from elsewhere, I can't comment. Wait, it can't be right. He said he let the hardware platform number one refresh project. Well, that's not true. Email company is huge. Is it possible he weren't aware of the project? No, I'm very aware of the project. And he wasn't leading it. How can you be so sure? Because I led that project. HR was suddenly very uncomfortable. Oh, I think it's best for everyone we end the call here. I think you have a phone call to make. Yeah, that's probably best. I didn't necessarily bash him, but just set the record straight. The next story is called Remove the Problem. I work in a highly regulated industry. The town has rules, the state has rules, we have independent certifications to maintain and corporate oversight. I hate bureaucracy and being told what to do. So there's a bit of poor fit there, to be honest. Anyway, we had a bathroom that was in a weird spot and had some layout issues too, so it was never used. There were two others 15 feet away. We didn't use or need it, but we did need storage space badly. So we put a lock on the door and stored stuff in there. The bathroom wasn't needed for town rules. The state didn't care. We didn't need it to maintain our certifications, but corporate. Corporate HQ had a rule that you couldn't store things in a bathroom. Good idea. That could be gross. But we locked it up and it's not used as a bathroom. No one can even get in there. Too bad. We are cited for breaking the rules and have to provide evidence to HQ that we have resolved this horrible failure. We are annoyed that no one can get their heads out of their butts to see that it makes no sense. So I called our plumbers. Compliance let us send. The toilet has been removed from the storage closet. The third story is called Wouldn't let me work from home. One of the side effects of a medication I'm on is uncontrollable gas. This is one of the less serious but more annoying and hilarious side effects. Lately it's gotten pretty bad. Since I usually work from home, I asked if I could work from home on my office day. I figured I'd spare others and only subject myself and my dog, who can hold his own gas-wise. I just said it was because I was having side effects, but kept it vague. I could hear my boss sigh. She said, you need to come in today. We have some new people starting and I told them you would do a meet and greet and it would look bad if I wasn't there. I didn't think that's a good enough reason, but she kept insisting. So I took a pill to try and stop the gas and went to work. The gas pill wore off at 10am. I managed to meet the people and it's fine. 
But then I'm informed that I'm expected to stay in the class and shadow the training. I'm guessing that's the real reason my boss wanted me in. At this point I try to get a private moment to tell my boss, a classy lady who wears pearls, that I'll be farting. But alas she was whisked away to another meeting. So, the first few times I had to fart I tried to excuse myself, but it became so distracting me going in and out of the room that eventually I just decided to let it happen in this room of about 10 of our newest hires. Someone must have told my boss on lunch break because I got a PM that said, ok you can go home. The last story is called No Patience. My dad has always been a patient man back when I was younger, but lately his patience is getting thinner than my receding hairline. He gets frustrated easily on things, even if it's an everyday moment, like long lines, light traffic, waiting for people, even if he's early on the time of the appointment. A while ago I called my supplier to order some copper wires to replenish our stock as I'm doing inventory. We own a small contracting firm. My dad told me to drop what I'm currently doing and drive him somewhere, before we go to our supplier to pick up the goods. As I started the car, our supplier texted me to message for confirmation purposes and to avoid any errors. My dad immediately blurted, that stuff can wait, let's go. But dad, this is from our… somehow he got irritated. Dad can wait, let's go. Ok, whatever you say. When we arrived at our supplier's store, my dad was surprised as the receptionist told him that we didn't order anything as they didn't receive any confirmation from us. Annoyed he told me, I thought you already called them to order. Remember the text that I was replying to? Yes, it's the supplier asking for confirmation. You can't wait for 30 freaking seconds for me to reply. You will be waiting here for 30 minutes or so for it to be done. We waited for more than an hour, as there were a lot of orders before they could process ours. He's annoyed but doesn't have any choice but to bear the consequences of his impatience. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. And if you have time, watch another one of my videos. And now I hope you have a great day. See you soon. Bye bye.